Good morning all. Today I thought I'd have uh, another go at building the vocoder project. Uh, so far all I've built is this, which is the noise generator on a little uh, PCB prototyping board, the type you can get on eBay quite cheaply. Uh, one pot on there and a couple of uh, CMOS ICs and uh, this is a pseudo random uh, noise generator. That goes there. Now I'm thinking about the physical construction where the only thing really that's uh, supporting these boards is the pot. So I'm trying to find a way of attaching the pot in such a way that uh, the connection is strong and I want it so that the board just touches the back of the front panel here. Uh, this is um, powder coated so it's effectively plasticized so nothing on that edge is going to get shorted uh, to the front panel. Um, now here I've got a double width board. This is for um, some oscillators, the excitation oscillators, and that's going to be anchored like that. There is a bit of an issue because these holes are 1.25 inches apart, which means there's a 50 thou uh, offset, which I will have to absorb somehow attaching the pots to this board. Uh, they do wiggle around a bit so there is a bit of wiggle room but uh, yeah essentially that's going to be connected like that and then I'm going to start building the oscillators on that board. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put these little six little wire links uh, into the board and solder those. Um, I've got this reel of Rapid Electronics uh, 24 SWG tinned copper wire. Not quite sure what the American equivalent of that is. I think SWG is a British uh, wire gauge uh, numbering system. And I really want the bend radius of these little loops to be correct because uh, I want them to sit in there and hold themselves in uh, so that they're all consistent height for when I solder. So I'm going to bend them around this screwdriver and see if that works. Just bending them manually was being a problem. Yeah that's quite a nice push fit. And uh, is that all a consistent height? See, the point is the legs of the pot have to slip in under there and I don't want to make it so that there's not enough room for the pot legs to slip in but that looks about right let's solder those. Right because these are through plated holes it's really a one hit process you don't get much of an opportunity to redo these or at least it's difficult to redo them. Right, that's soldered. Let's see if the pot legs slip under those little links. So these pot legs have to slip under the little loops. And yeah, that feels pretty good. That's a nice tight fit. And then I'll solder those on and then uh, possibly solder the fronts here where the little um, bits of, uh, well, whatever that metal is, copper, I suppose, coming off the pot is sitting just above these uh, edge connectors. I'll see if I can run some solder on there because I just want this to be a really strong fit. I don't think I've bent the pot legs quite far back enough. I'll just bend them back a bit more. Uh, okay, so let's get the other three links on. So uh, yeah, those are fitted on there quite well. They're not soldered yet, uh, but the pot legs sit under the little wire loops. And uh, so that's ready to go into the front panel. So let's get that now. So that board's going to go there. These are the two frequency pots for the excitation oscillators. And then I want to uh, make sure that this board is sort of upright and pressed against the front panel. And then I'm going to solder uh, what I can of these pins. I'm absorbing that 50 thou error, so these are a little bit tight in the holes. Uh, I'm not sure yet whether it's going to go that way around or that way around. Um, I do need some way of supporting the VU meter LED board that's going to sit in there because it's got no uh, mounting on the front. So possibly uh, it will go that way around in order to support that. But then there's another one up here uh, and that probably needs to be supported by this one. So I'm not sure yet. But anyway, I'm going to solder that in. Uh, I might even put the nuts on those to hold them nice and tight on the board and then get it all attached. Right, let's solder these uh, pot connections with everything in place. 
as many of them as I can get to. I can get to those two. Uh, I might have to turn it around to get to the ones on the other side. Okay, this one. Yep, yeah, that's taken. And this one. And then the ones in the middle, I'll probably do off camera because I can't see what I'm doing very well. Right, that looks pretty good. Uh, those are all soldered on. That looks like it's uh, pretty good at right angles to the front panel. Uh, now you can see there that the pots are ever so slightly splayed out. Not sure whether you can see that, but uh, that's absorbed this 50 thou difference between the pitch of these two holes and the pitch of the various holes on this board. Uh, so if I unscrew these now and take the board off the front panel, I can start working on this board, uh, put the chips on there, which will run down the middle, and then some sort of connector system at the bottom for interconnecting the board. So there'll be another one here for the shape pots, another one here for the level pots, and then I'll run little wire links between the boards with uh, these turned pin connectors, these, um, which you can get quite cheaply, uh, used as interconnection sockets. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've also flooded solder in onto these pads and up into the uh, metal as it comes off the pot. Uh, two pads for that one, uh, only one pad for that one. I haven't done the middle, but that just helps to anchor the pots and make sure they're a really good, strong mechanical fit and they uh, support the board really well since it's only actually the pot screwed through the front panel holes that's holding this whole thing together. So here's the circuitry that's gonna go on this oscillator board. Um, now these two parts are this one here, frequency, 10K log. I did check that, didn't I? Yeah, 10K log, because these would be very difficult to get off now. So A, 10K, uh, 10K log for frequency and 10K log for frequency on the other oscillator. Uh, these chips, you've got IC1A and IC1B, they're actually dual op amps and they're shared between the two Oscillator. So I'll run the chips down the middle. Uh, the op amp on one side will be one oscillator and on the other side the other. Uh, so since the circuitry kind of stops here before it goes on to the next pot, which will actually be on another board, this board is only going to take IC1B and IC2B. So there are two uh, dual op amps. So we'll have two four pin devices here and all the circuitry either side. Um, to build these two. Now these are triangle wave oscillators, um, the output of which goes into these uh, op amps which have no feedback, so they're acting as comparators, uh, and that squares off the signal, so a square wave comes out of here, and this shape control acts as a pulse width control, so you can vary the pulse width um, of the square wave coming out, and then finally on the third board, there'll be a third one of these, there'll be the level pot, which is just a, a volume control. Now I've got to be careful here because the shape pot, I think is 10K linear. So I've got to keep my uh, keep alert, not put a log in there. Log here for frequency, log for level, linear for shape. Now there are an even number of holes here, which is quite nice because it means that uh, being the OCD person I am, I can have my chips running absolutely down the center of this board. Uh, so that's nice. Now there are only two 8-pin devices on this ball, these are just loose at the moment. Uh, so it won't be quite as cramped as this one, which has two 14-pin devices. I had to put them tight up to the pot there, but leave some room at this end, because that's where I want to put my interconnection system, which will probably be um, a row, probably not that long, of uh, connectors one side, and then also another row coming up from underneath so that I can pass wires between boards without having to wrap around to the other side. So I want at least two rows up this end for my interconnection system. So uh, that looks uh, that looks okay. I think I'll uh, drop those in right there. Now I've got to get these uh, straight and square, which is always a bit difficult. Probably what I'll do is put a couple of chips in there to hold them uh, the right pitch while I solder them in. Or of course I can just resort to using good old blue tack to hold everything roughly in place. It's not 
exactly right, is it? I can't quite get that exactly right, but that's probably good enough. Uh, solder those in and then I can pop the chips in. Uh, yes, I may not put the chips in immediately, but uh, that's where the chips are going. Hmm, I couldn't quite get these to line up as well as I wanted to, so I've gone for a hybrid solution of a bit of blue tech under there and the chip uh, pushed into the two bits of socket and now I'm going to flip that over and solder it. I am a bit fussy about getting everything looking neat. It's probably a bit stupid really. Wouldn't matter if it was all higgledy-piggledy, it would still work wouldn't it? But if you're going to do it, why not do it right? Okay, that looks good. Struggling to get these chips out now, so I've found an old chip puller. But these things can sort of suddenly jump on you. So I tend to pull them out and hold them down at the same time. So the chip doesn't fly out and shoot across the room. I just wanted to get this blue tack out. So there are my chip sockets. Let's push the chips back in. I might as well. They're not static sensitive or likely to get damaged by heat. They're just dual op amps. Now I can start thinking about um, putting all these resistors and capacitors around the chips. Um, now one thing about these circuit diagrams, they're, they're really quite poor. They don't give you any pin numbers uh, for the chips. So I can't see, uh, I mean I think, well, I can't remember now, I think on dual op amps, uh, VCC is, is it seven and ground is four? I can't remember, I'll have to look it up. And then mark on this diagram uh, the pin numbers so that I can fit in my 10K resistor, uh, the 5K6, which is feedback across the two, uh, 100N capacitor. Now capacitors is also an issue. What type of capacitors should I use for an oscillator? Probably not ceramic. Well, it seems that for the RC4558, which is the dual op amp I'm gonna use, uh, actually VCC plus is on uh, pin eight, VCC minus, is on pin 4 so it'll be plus 12 volts on pin 8 minus 12 volts on pin 4 and then ground will be on one of the inputs presumably now let's just check that for the 1458 because that was the device that was um, specified I'm actually using the 4558 what has that got to do with the 1458 and David Jason that's really bizarre uh, have we got anything this is really strange. Perhaps it's the UA1458. Uh, yeah, that's more like it. Uh, not very good image here, but uh, again, V plus on 8, V minus on 4. The outputs are on 1 and 7. And then the uh, non-inverting input and the inverting input are on 2 and 3. And uh, what's that? 5 and 6. I'm just going to double check that it's exactly the same between the two chips and then mark up my drawing. So now, what about components? Um, well, these boards you can get on eBay. I think I probably bought these from Alice. Um, the RC4558s, uh, these all came from Alice. I think she now does the 1458s as well. So I might get some of those and experiment with um, the, the difference between them because 4558 is low noise. The 1458, is it 1458 or 14? I can't remember what the number is now. Um, it's a higher noise component. Basically, it's just a dual 741. Uh, now, pots, these, uh, I bought the whole lot in one go from Tader Electronics. So I've got all the pots in there. Uh, some are logarithmic, some are linear. In fact, there's Tader's uh, little thank you notes, I think. Yeah, so they came from Tader Electronics. Now the resistors were a bit more tricky because this uh, project, because it has all the uh, 14 different frequency channels, it uses pretty much every resistor there is in the E24 series between about 47 ohms and 1 meg. So what I've done is I've bought the, um, these resistor kits from uh, Rapid Electronics. This was the, uh, the best one I could find. That's the part number, but it is on um, end of stock. So when these are all sold, they won't have any more left. And this has most of the values uh, in 1% metal film that the project uses. And any that it uh, it didn't have, I bought them as these little packs of 100. Uh, these are quantities of 10 or 15 or 20, depending on the value 
uh, for popular values like uh, 1 meg, you get 30, 10k, 100k, that sort of thing, you get more of them. Uh, so for this first resistor here, 10k between pins 5 and 7 on one side and pins 3 and 1 on the other, I've got to try and find the 10k resistors in amongst this lot now. Uh, <laughs> I really do need to organize a system for store. Oh, there we are. 10k. So we get 30 10ks. Yeah, I need to organize a system for storing resistors because uh, I'd got down to quite low stocks and so I've had to buy all this. There are about 3,000 resistors in this kit. It cost about 40 quid. It was a bit over the top, but um, I just didn't have a good selection of resistors. Uh, now I do. Uh, right, I think these are 10k. These are all four band resistors. So it's brown, black, black, red. Yeah, that's 10k. How many do I need? Well, just two, it appears. So, uh, hmm, this is going to take a while. And uh, because I've been caught out by this sort of thing in the past, I'll just uh, double check these. 9.95 and climbing, bizarrely. Yeah, 10k. So I've soldered in the uh, two 10k resistors, but of course with this prototyping board there are no tracks, so you've got to build your own tracking. So I haven't cut the legs off yet. I'm going to have to bend them over and use them as tracks to join the resistors up to the legs of the op amps. So I'll bend those over, solder them on, and then cut them off. So there are my two uh, 10k resistors across the two sides of my first op amp and then the wires have been uh, bent over, well soldered through the first pad first, then bent over and used as effectively PCB tracks to run into the pins on the IC. Uh, so yes, using this uh, prototyping board is a bit more fiddly than uh, just building on a, on a pre-made PCB. Now what about these 100N uh, capacitors, 104, uh, 100,000 picofarad? Um, in the parts list in the original article, it specifies them as polyester, and I believe that this sort of um, green coated component is a polyester. Um, this is a prototype I built of this circuit a while back. Now in here I've used 100N uh, ceramic, but they are these resin dipped ceramics. And I'm just wondering whether resin dipped would take away the sort of... Um, moisture gathering properties that ceramic capacitors tend to have and whether that would actually be fine. They're a lot smaller than these massive polyester ones. Um, some parts of this circuit, particularly the filter components, it actually specifies polycarbonate. So what's the difference between all these different uh, uh, capacitor types? So I found this uh, document from the University of Hertfordshire and this actually has some nice diagrams here of the different types. We've got um, polyester 1, 2 and 3, these orange stripy ones and the dark green ones that I've got. Uh, polycarbonate, these little square ones with the orange ends and polystyrene, these ones here. And then a load of ceramic capacitors of all different types. Uh, here's the dipped resin ceramics that I've got. And uh, yes, then of course there are the electrolytics and the tantalums. Um, so certainly polyester, that's the type specified in the uh, original article. So maybe I should just stick to that. It is big, but then on my board, um, I've got plenty of space on here. So yeah, maybe I'll just use those green ones. I think I've got a box of those somewhere. Yeah, I found this box, uh, Caps, Elec and Poly. I'm pretty sure I've bought some kits on eBay um, a while back. Yeah, these are the poly ones. Uh, yeah, those are the electrolytics. So I should have some uh, 100 ends in amongst this lot. I'll have to wade through that. Yeah, this is probably the hardest part of this project, actually finding all the components, um, sorting them all out. I can't find the 100 ends in here. And I think that's because I separated them out a while back. Um, so actually these are 104s, so they're 100 ends, I need two of those, so yeah, done. So the 100 ends go between uh, pins 2 and 1 on the second chip, that's this chip, uh, on one side, and pins 6 and 7 on the other side, so I'm probably going to have to 
that's very close together so I'm probably going to have to lay the capacitor down and it come out like this uh, there are no yeah there's a feedback component there 56k from pin 1 and 7 going back so that's coming from this side so nothing should interfere if I lean them slightly out this way perhaps uh, that should be fine uh, actually I've decided to stand these up so it goes pins 2 and 1 on one side and 6 and 7 on the other let's get those soldered in so there we are the uh, 100N capacitors marked 104 are mounted on the board and the component legs have had to double as PCB tracks running into the chip there now another couple of components which should be relatively easy to fit are these 5k6 uh, resistors 5k6 up there 5k6 up there they go from the back end of the second chip although it's the pins that are on the left hand side to the front end of the first chip but those pins are on the right hand side so it doesn't actually span very far so I'm going to do that now that might actually fit in that gap there it won't be quite straight hmm not sure so I fitted a, a few more resistors now including uh, the 5k6 at the top there 560 ohms to uh, the pot bottom 18k to the pot wiper uh, so I think that's all the components now for just this section now I've got to link together all the ground lines, so uh, pin 2, first chip, pin 3, second chip, uh, and so on. So I fitted uh, quite a lot of the link wires as well for ground. I think uh, these wires are, no, this is the wire for top of pot uh, back into the, well, between the first op amp going into top of pot, wiper goes to the second op amp. Um, I also had to put the um, minus 12 volts linking pin 4 of both chips, which I managed to fit in very close to the packages. Um, but the link wire for pins 8, linking both of pins 8 together, um, which is plus 12 volts, I had to move right to the outside, which isn't ideal. It runs right along there and then runs in along two arms here. So it's really interesting working with this board because... In effect, you're laying the components out, but you're also sort of laying the PCB out at the same time and trying to decide uh, which is the best PCB layout. That's obviously not optimum, linking right out to here and back in. But um, it was the only way I could sort of fit it on the board, well, neatly. So I'm going to take a break now because I've been sat uh, really motionless for about three hours. And you don't want to do too much of that, not particularly good for you. So I might take a little walk. Um, so what I'll do is probably come back to this. All I need to do now is link uh, 12 volts, 0 volts, minus 12 volts, and the two oscillator outputs through to um, one of these little single inline connectors, uh, which I'll fit up the end of the board there. So link those five connections through, and then I can uh, test this by putting power on the board and taking the two audio outputs, mixing them probably through a couple of resistors, and putting through that through some sort of uh, amplifier and speaker. But uh, I may not put that in this video, or I may tack a bit on the end. I'm not sure yet.